World Triathlon Corporation says I'm registered. <laughs> you gotta throw that light a really long way. Morning, Trainiacs. You ever have one of those days where you just think to yourself, you know, it's time that I registered for a half iron man. Today's the day. Classification, age group, country represented, Canada. Allergies to medications, none. Hypersensitivities including insect stings or ocean animals. I hate snakes. Occupation, social media guru. Employer, Gracie and Petey. I agree, I agree, I agree, I agree. Take my money, Iron Man. Take it good. <gasps> oh, you kicked me back to the start, you son of a... Continue, take two. Two tries and 25 short minutes later, I am entered for Ironman Austin 70.3 Trainiacs. Now, if you didn't watch yesterday's video, I don't blame you because it was an epically long 15 minute saga. I'm racing Ironman 70.3 Austin. That was by about five or six votes, the race that the majority of all you Trainiacs said that you were going to or you'd be able to go to. Uh, if you are thinking about going to Austin, go to triathlonterran.com forward slash Austin, put in your email address, and I'm gathering emails of everyone that thinks that they might be going to the event. And what I think we're gonna do is we'll try to get together for a dinner, gathering something Friday evening, and then Saturday having a group pre-race warm-up. And we'll get this party started. I am psyched at the prospect of getting a whole bunch of us together because in Winnipeg, we're isolated. I mean, I don't see that many Trainiacs around Winnipeg. There's a handful up here, but getting everyone together at a big race that we can all train for, man, that would be cool. World Triathlon Corporation says I'm registered. And with regards to the timing of entering races, I'm a big believer that if not right before you do a really big event or right after, before you can really even think about like, oh, should I go to another event? Do I need to do another event? When's that next event gonna be? Enter another event because that, that lull of right after a big event when you've got nothing to train for, that's the time when a lot of triathletes become demotivated and get out of routine. Right now, I'm barely just coming out of recovering from the long swim. I don't really have a whole lot of mojo to get out and get training, but I wanted to register for this race, tell Pat that I'm ready to hop on the pain train, get a plan going, and at least starting to have something to work towards. Keeps me motivated, probably keep you motivated. Well, train dance. I'm officially a YouTube vlogger. I got a mail time package. As YouTube vloggers do, let's go get a knife and open this thing up. I know it's cliche at this point. Got, we got, what do we got? Ugh, it's like asbestos in here. <laughs> oh, I know this. This is a mess. Who mails stuff in that? These are bike lights, front and back, blinding ones from Nog. I chatted with them about setting up my commuter bike and my road bike, and here's what they recommended. Allow me to explain what and why we've got what we got here. Get on my hazmat suit to clean this up. Beautiful, beautiful. Asbestos on your hands is healthy, right? Let's go ahead and start by getting this specialized sticks off the back of my bike. Nothing but problems with that. We'll give it to Mel. So the rear of said bike on the commuter is the Nog Blinder Mob, which is rated for six to 66 hours and has 44 lumens. So that's not 
awfully bright, but it's bright enough to be seen, especially if it's on a flash. Rear light. And for the front light, we've got the matching blinder mob from Nog that has 80 lumens and is rated for five to 60 hours. And now these aren't charged up yet, but the idea behind commuter bike lights is that you just wanna be seen because you're not going so fast that you need to see. You can see just a few feet in front of you. It needs to be easy to take these off of your bike in just one swoop because you're parking at work. I'm downtown. It's not so safe to park things downtown with a bunch of easily stealable stuff on them. So in the case of these, you just go whoop. And the nice thing about these as far as charging goes is that you just plug them in my USB. And typically, I would put both the rear light and the front light on a flash so that you're a lot more visible. You're not confused with like street lights or other vehicles. It keeps it safe. Road bike lights are a fair bit more tricky. We'll get to that when I'm at home around a road bike. Now, as far as the race bike goes, you wanna be as visible as possible for as far in front and behind the bike as possible. You gotta throw that light a really long way because you're traveling so fast, it needs to go out a long way because as you're moving, you're basically going over light. So you need to be able to see a long way in front of you. Cars in behind you, same sort of thing. It's gotta throw a long way back because cars are moving so quickly and you're moving so quickly. And the second thing is that where you're riding, typically with a road bike or a tri bike, is either by yourself or on highways, sides of roads, where cars might not necessarily be paying as much attention to it as they are when they're in start and stop traffic in the city driving. So for the rear, we use the blinder road, which is as bright as Nog gets. And then on the front, we wanna be even brighter. So this is 250 lumens. This is like the bat signal here. The reason that I went with Nog is because Coach Pat swears by them. This is his go-to light. That's not to say that they're cheap, but they work. So if you're looking for a good light for a road bike, you're looking at something like this. These lights here, are quite a bit different than the commuter bike lights. The commuter bike lights are 44 lumens and 80 lumens respectively, whereas the road bike lights are 70 lumens and 250 lumens respectively. Cost-wise, these two come as a pair. You can get them individually, but it's much better off to get them as a pair and it costs $135. This pair costs 85. They all charge, oh. they all charge up with the same USB idea. You might be saying, hey Taryn, this is really weird. Why are you covering bike lights? It's because a run over triathlete is not a very fast triathlete. This is only going to last five and a half hours. This lasts 20 hours. This lasts in between five and 60 hours, depending on the setting. And this lasts between six and 65 hours, depending on the setting. So here you go, Traniacs, light up your bikes. Thanks Nog for sending that out. This was not a paid for advertisement. How this came about was I was looking to set up some bike lights. I went to Coach Pat, I said, dude, you got good bike lights. You never have any problems with your bike lights. What bike lights do you use? And he said, reach out to Nog. And I did, and they were nice enough to send it out so that I could show it all to you and you could be safe. Thanks, Nog. Hit the like button below if you'd be interested in seeing in about two to three weeks my impressions and like a full review on what the Nog lights are like. Other than that, I'm out. I'm gonna eat some grapes now.